Hello everyone, today we're going to go over the 21st Amendment, the repeal of Prohibition. Helping us with this task is Tavish Finnegan de Groot. Hi! But we'll just call him Devil Man for short. Hey, thanks! Anyways, the 21st Amendment is where they re-legalize alcohol in America. God bless America! Soldier, get out of here! This isn't about you! Boo! Let's go! America! Yeah, no. Ah! Oh, I need a drink! Not so fast, Demo. We gotta explain why drinks were banned first. Bah! <sighs> So the year is 1920, alcohol has been banned all throughout the United States. The reason for this was that alcohol was the prime reason for crime and social problems. And yet, people had this burning desire to drink alcohol so much, they smuggled them in secret. In fact, because of this amendment, crime rates actually increased rather than decreased, creating more problems throughout America. It's on! It's on like... What? Because of this, the 21st Amendment was made, where all the alcohol transportation and sales were re-established. But before we can get into the actual amendment, let's establish more on the illegality of the alcohol with speakeasies. Before alcohol was re-legalized, people resorted to drinking underground taverns called speakeasies. These taverns were the main source of drinking without getting caught. Give me my scrumpy! Hmm. Of course. Ha <laughs> ha Cheers, mate! In fact, so many people came to these speakeasies that even the police are drinking in secret. Of course, with all this secret drinking going around, it created a black market economy that competed with the floral economy, which President Roosevelt wasn't exactly happy about. I know what they're doing is illegal, but... Ugh! We're losing money fast. Alcohol is one of the main sources of income in America. We've got to do something about this. As you can see, President Franklin Roosevelt is also opposed to prohibition, and it's the main standing point for his election to office. However, at the time, the economy was in shambles due to the Great Depression, which was another key factor in the increase of crime rates. Luckily for Mr. Roosevelt, a paper just so happened to pass by. Mr. President, we have a Perfect! This document is exactly what I'm looking for. You know, my friend, I think it's a good time to get some beer. So on March of 1933, President Roosevelt signed the Cullen Harris Act, which authorized the sale of 3.2% beer and wine. This authorization then evolved into the 21st Amendment in December, repealing the ban of alcohol everywhere. <sighs> A few moments later. Unfortunately, it did not stop alcohol poisoning. <laughs> God bless America! The end.